Good afternoon, uh, it's Fred Hayes. I'm glad to uh, join you. I wish I was there in person for your uh, celebration or remembrance uh, back to uh, exciting days I had some 45 years ago on the Apollo 13 mission. Uh, the movie, uh, Hollywood movie uh, that was made of uh, this mission, uh, I'll just make a few comments about it. Uh, first of all, almost all the lines in the movie except Houston we've had a problem uh, were uh, a Hollywood scriptwriter. Uh, the reason being, uh, uh, Ron Howard uh, was given uh, and uh, all the data, including our voice transmissions, mission control, and ours. And I thought it was funny when uh, one time before the filming, I talked to Ron, who had listened to all of that. And he said, I listened to all of that, and it never was apparent you had a problem. Uh, but the second thing was, obviously, that uh, he could not use uh, much of what we said in the movie was it was too technical. And he realized unless uh, one was familiar with the spacecraft uh, systems, you wouldn't be able to understand maybe what we were uh, talking about. Uh, but uh, it, you know, I would have probably changed a few things if I uh, uh, had to make the movie. I would not have had some of the vulgarity it has, which gave it a PG-13 rating. Jim Lovell uh, said hell once, uh, so that was a degree of the vulgarity in the movie. Uh, they kind of gave a bad impression of uh, us worrying about or Jack Swigert uh, joining the crew uh, several days before launch and uh, his capability, and that was not the case. Uh, prime and backup crews trained equally in those days. I, certainly I was a backup on 8 and 11, uh, and I certainly could have replaced uh, the person who flew it, and I think did as good a job on either of those flights with the training I had. So that was not, not a problem at all that I thought was uh, uh, done poorly in the movie. Uh, they, they had some uh, exaggeration, if you will, of the kind of spacecraft uh, motions at times, uh, particularly during the uh, manual maneuvers we did mid-courses on the way home uh, without the use of computers and uh, done all manually looking sort of out the window. Uh, they had uh, extreme maneuvers of the earth wavering and up and down and I was about to lose control. That did not happen at all. We did two of those, actually, not using computers on the way home. And uh, we never had an excursion more than even one degree in any of the axis during those very short maneuvers, really. They were, I think, one 18 seconds and one like 21, 22 seconds long. Uh, but overall, I'd have to say one thing that uh, uh, the theme carried uh, very well uh, with the movie was the a story, a story of people uh, who had a problem, a serious problem, which we did, uh, some great challenges, uh, some things to overcome. That was being worked uh, by a team, a team on the ground, in conjunction and teamwork with us in flight uh, to make things happen that enable us to get home. Now, the team was much larger than the movie showed. It's one of the complaints I had with uh, Ron Howard when we had a private showing uh, after the before, actually just before the movie was released to the public, and uh, I uh, I felt uh, some other people might have been mentioned. Uh, uh, you have to realize the overall Apollo team at peak was over 400,000 people around the United States, and when we flew it, it had scaled down, but still probably a couple of hundred thousand people. And uh, he just told me that. Uh, and if you have a, a time of a couple of hours, uh, a little more to make them in a movie, he said you can only uh, develop uh, so many characters. And so you have to uh, pick and choose uh, uh, which characters you're going to portray in a movie. So that was his uh, rationale uh, as, to, as to why that was the case. I Overall, uh, it certainly played uh, a very, uh, gave a very dramatic picture of what I felt was the process uh, we had in place uh, to handle problems. Um, all, all missions had problems, some more serious than others. Uh, for instance, we almost aborted Apollo 14 uh, when the solder ball occurred in the abort switch and they had actually uh, 
real time uh, reprogram the computer to not look at that switch so they could go into the landing program. And of course on Apollo 16, uh, after they separated to get ready to land, uh, uh, there was a problem with the secondary actuators and the uh, command module uh, SPS engine at, had to take some work around and they stooged around in orbit and formation for uh, another uh, revolution before they worked that out and John Young and uh, Charlie Duke could actually go land uh, uh, on the moon on Apollo 16. But I'd say Apollo 14, uh, obviously with the uh, drama and hyped by the movie, uh, certainly uh, gave a demonstration of what the, uh, the, the knowledge base we had, the team we had with the right leadership uh, to tackle problems. I, of course, was disappointed that I did not get to land and ultimately through another training cycle on Apollo 16 had hoped I'd get to go back and try it again on Apollo 19, which did, did not occur. Uh, kind of a second point of uh, disappointment. But as I look back now over these all these years, uh, I would have to say I just now feel very, uh, very fortunate, very lucky to have been uh, in the right uh, spot with the right background and training as a test pilot to have been qualified to uh, join the program and uh, have the opportunity I did on a very unique mission uh, a test pilot's mission if you will on Apollo 13 and have that uh, that opportunity uh, to be one of 24 people who have gotten a chance to go to the moon I, I wish you all well. I hope you hope you enjoy the movie, and I hope maybe to be back for another uh, another show in uh, five more years at the fiftieth uh, anniversary.